But at the moment, the best alternative we have in many people's mind to fossil fuels is hydrogen. So you need to store it as liquid cryogenic temperatures. That's colder than anywhere in our solar system. If you want to have it as gas, you need massive pressures. That's costing a lot of energy. And it's a nightmare to store and transport around. That's why when people talk about the hydrogen economy, we believe that the hydrogen economy is probably more like the ammonia economy. We say, turn it into ammonia. Ammonia is the energy vector. So you turn renewable energy into hydrogen. From there, you can turn that into ammonia and that makes it much more transportable. So that's the first step. Then you have the second step. About 70% of ammonia is towards fertilized production. And also beyond that, ammonia is everywhere. So we use ammonia in our cleaning product, in our toothpaste. Also in pharmaceutical, ammonia is very important chemical. On top of that, ammonia is interesting for other reasons. We need more fuel and we need to get off fossil fuels. How do we do that? Ammonia burns as a clean fuel. When it burns, you get water vapor and, and nitrogen. So it is currently being looked at as a direct replacement for diesel and petrol. And ammonia looks like a potential good use case for shipping in the future. So when you ask, is ammonia part of a green transition? It's gotta be. The trouble with that is ammonia today relies on massive industrial facilities, totally reliant on fossil fuels. We burn oil, we burn gas, we burn coal in order to make the massive pressures and temperatures that ammonia traditionally requires. Taking hydrogen and then nitrogen, activate a catalyst and then you have it coming out the other end, ammonia. And that process is known as the Haber-Bosch process. Neom exists to eliminate emissions. We want to clean up that process to make sure that all the ammonia being made is green. So Neom is an entrepreneur, that's me, a former race car engineer and a nanoscientist, UBL. When I first met Yubiao, he started talking about nanocatalysis. And I was like, yeah, I kind of get catalyst, but you basically you pass gases over a catalyst and then it makes something else, in this case, ammonia. I grew up somewhere close to the Harbour Bosch plant. Every time you breathe, you can feel it. This is really something unpleasant. And then I went to university. I studied chemical engineering, and I feel like so now it's an opportunity to turn those heavy industry more sustainable way to make ammonia. Do the same thing, much cleaner way. That will be really a great thing. The UBR Jumia system. We build small-scale reactors. We call them the Minion, which has a nano catalyst that he invented in, and that's powered by renewables. Catalysis is all about the, the surface size. So if you can have um, loads of surface area in a small volume, you have a very good catalyst for ammonia production at a much lower temperature, much lower pressure. So we put the most promising catalyst in and then introduce nitrogen and hydrogen. And we monitor the gas coming out from the chamber. We detected some ammonia thing, you know. At that moment, we thought this is a huge breakthrough. And then we got really excited. What nanocatalyst does is it has much greater surface area. So that greater surface area means you can drop the heat, you drop the pressure. And what that means is you no longer need to rely on fossil fuels. And then we can power the whole setup with renewables. So this is our Mark 1, our test reactor, effectively a scaled down Minion. 
we are taking nitrogen and hydrogen and combining them in the presence of our catalyst to produce ammonia. Once we've tested the catalyst here, we can put a larger quantity in the Mark II and test its ability to produce ammonia at scale. NIAM uses small one meter long reactors that produce one ton of ammonia a day. If you need to produce 20 tons, you just have 20 minions. And unlike Harbour Bosch, the big plants that take three days to power up, we take half an hour to power up, and then we can start making green ammonia from the energy that's available. Our catalyst enables uh, green ammonia on demand. The colour of the ammonia is uh, a reflection on the way that feedstocks that go into it are made. So you need green hydrogen to make green ammonia. So green ammonia on demand means you can decarbonize, means you can decentralize your global ammonia supply chain. And then finally, obviously, we're starting to help the hydrogen economy really take a foothold. So hydrogen is, a, is very good in terms of an energy source when you need it. How do you move that from A to B? Hydrogen, very tricky. Ammonia, we've got a global infrastructure. Our grandparents established this infrastructure we've been using for fertilizer over the last 100 years. It means that we can then tap into that network and move that hydrogen energy in the global south that have a lot of sun and a lot of wind up to the global north where there's more people and we consume much more energy. We have technology to make a big impact when we come to solve the climate crisis.